भैया जैसे आपने पिछली बार कंपैरिजन किया तो मैंने डिसाइड किया है कि मेरे को सेमी इंडस्ट्री पर ही जाना है थोड़ी बार तो मैं प्रेफ्यूजन से कवर कर लूँगा लेकिन कोडिंग के लिए क्या क्या चीज़ें आनी चाहिए प्लीज़ थोड़ा सा गाइड कर दीजिए अच्छा ठीक है तो थ्योरी पार्ट तो तुम प्रेफ्यूजन से कवर कर ही लेना जहाँ तक स्क्रिप्टिंग लैंग्वेज की बात है तो पर्ल पी सी एल वेरी लोग सिस्टम वेरी लोग ओडिनो सी प्लस प्लस पाइथन ये सारी कोडिंग लैंग्वेज तुम्हें सीखनी पड़ेगी आई नो मोस्ट ऑफ यू गाइज आर जस्ट कन्फ्यूज लाइक दिस वन दैट हाउ मच कोडिंग एक्चुअली यू नीट टू लर्न टू गेट यू स्टार्टेड इन द फील एस इंडस्ट्री सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन एक्जैक्टली दैट ऑल्सो डू कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग द चैनल एज सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ यू गाइज हु आर वॉचिंग द वीडियो हैव एंड सब्सक्राइब डेट सो इफ यू लाइक द कंटेंट एंड यू वॉन्ट मोर कंटेंट लाइक दिस डू कंसिडर लाइकिंग द वीडियो एंड शेयरिंग विथ विथ फ्रेंड्स सो लेट्स गेट टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो सो दिस इज स्ट्रिक्टली फॉर द बी टेक स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज नॉट फॉर द एम टेक स्टूडेंट्स एंड दिस इज स्ट्रिक्टली फॉर दोज हुर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द एनलॉग डोमेन एंड ऑल्सो फॉर द डिजिटल डोमेन बिकॉज इन डिजिटल डोमेन ऑब्वियसली यू नीड टू लर्न ए बिट ऑफ कोडिंग बट इन एनलॉग डोमेन the amount of coding that you need to learn is much lesser okay i will talk about both digital and analog first thing i want to say is your first priority should be your core subjects your fundamental electronic subjects should not be left out that is the theoretical subject right the network theory analog electronics and digital electronics these three are very important subjects obviously after finishing all these three then you go to the coding part yes electronics is a combination of both hardware and software you need the knowledge of both obviously but first you have to finish all this thing because in your interviews and your written test for analog and digital right mainly like these three are focused on and the knowledge of coding will be required at a later stage they may be asked right coding questions may be asked but they may be asked in the lesser amount these three are the main topics so i will recommend to focus on these three first then you go to the coding part generally what i have observed is that students take electronics due to fear of coding but obviously it's not the case that you don't have to code at all you will have to code a bit but that is not like the cs guys coding is an important skill due to growing integration of both software and hardware in the semiconductor industry in vlsi coding is not about building apps or scalable networks it's more about describing the behavior and structure of electronic components now let's discuss how much coding exactly you need to learn so basically it depends on the three parameters what is the first parameter first parameter is the on the job role basically what is the job role that we get like there are obviously more job roles but i am explaining with example of three job roles uh, one is the design validation and verification so let's say if you are on the design job role so if you are on the design job role then what does that mean that means you have to know the basic knowledge of cadence and other unix language right there it may so happen that like other coding languages like python and all those things may not be required obviously it may be required because it depends on project as well what type of project you are in but mainly you have to have the knowledge of cadence that is the most important one now let's say if you are on the validation role right so if you are on the validation role so it may so happen you have to automate few things or you have, you have to validate few things so there like knowledge of python c++ all those things may be required okay there it is very important to have the knowledge of those those coding skills right now what is the second parameter second parameter is the type of industry you are in now it depends on the type of which industry you are in either they focus too much on coding or they don't also it depends on the profile of the company so if you are in a big mnc right they do care about their code base as they want to maintain their standard of their product now if you are in startups then it may so happen that they don't care too much about their code base they just want to get the device up and running so it depends on company to company now this is not something fixed but this is what i have observed now let's understand what exactly you need to learn if you are in any of this type of job roles so these three are the different use cases of coding first one is hardware design then is verification and validation and third is automation as I explained right in the previous slide about the job roles so in hardware design obviously you have to understand the hardware descriptive languages from those you can define the behavior of the electronic components okay and about verification and validation like uh, there are two types of validation right one is post silicon and another one is pre silicon so it it depends on company to company and it depends on your project what exactly you need to learn basically you have to uh, sometimes validate let's say we have designed it designer has designed the chip okay next is the task of validation that whatever specs the designer has given and whatever specs he, he has designed according to the chip 
you have to validate whether that chip is uh, providing you those specifications or parameters or not if they are not providing you with those parameters then there may be some flaw in the either in the design or in the validation process so that is what a validation engineer does there are few other aspects as well i will not explain those further okay and what about my automation so automation is basically about the testing of chip so now your the initial concept phase has been done you have designed your chip and you have validated that yes the chip is giving me correct results now you want to mass production it right you mass produce it and then you have to test all the chips okay all the chips now obviously uh, you might think that testing all the chips will be very difficult yes it is difficult that's why we try to automate the chips right testing of chips we try to automate it like if some human is involved in testing of chips obviously there will be some human error involved right so we don't want that human error to be involved so we want to skip that error that's why we try to automate our repetitive task so that human error isn't involved there also sometimes we may have to generate proper algorithms for power optimization routing and timing analysis so all these things obviously we can do only with the help of coding so sometimes the knowledge of coding is also required obviously for power optimization what is required obviously the core concepts of your theoretical knowledge right of your analog electronics all those things are required and obviously bit of coding is also required to implement those to ma make a algorithm basically so yeah, these are the use cases of coding as i mentioned earlier that your organization will obviously provide you with some trainings so that you get accustomed to whatever technologies they use right so don't worry you will be able to grasp all this in a very short amount of time in the next part of the video i will tell you what are the basic concepts that you need to learn to get you started with just remember one thing learning coding is not that difficult unless you want to become a pro coder like cs guys because you just have to learn one language and the other language are pretty much very similar to that if i from an electrical background can learn all this right you also can so these are the three things that i recommend that you should learn basically the first is basics of c++ right everyone should learn this then is the verification and validation in verification and validation obviously if you are in verification and validation you should have the python knowledge matlab knowledge and verilog knowledge obviously you should have cleared your fundamental subjects first the theoretical subjects first then you come to here right and for automation you should learn python so what my recommendation will be if you have very less time just learn python and bit about very long okay you don't have to learn too much just learn a bit about these two okay and you will be good to go obviously it depends ask your seniors like if the job role is for different right obviously you need to have more knowledge for very long than you ask your seniors what do they ask if they ask about very long more obviously you need to learn very long more now i am telling it for a broader amount of people who don't have any coding knowledge at all so basics i am telling you advance if you need to learn then you have to ask your seniors as well that what extra things that you need to learn for getting that job role specifically now from where you should study all this so i have given you these three videos if you just study these three videos and you don't have any time right you can learn c++ in these two videos and python in this last video so if you don't have any time you can just watch these three videos and you are good to go now my ending remarks will be you don't have to worry about coding nowadays everything is available with the help of google and stack overflow so just whatever bug you you are getting or if you are stuck in something right you just google search and you will be able to figure out what is the bug causing that error and you will be able to rectify it so don't worry about coding as i told right just learn all those basic things and if you need to learn something extra that you have to understand from your seniors or from other people according to the job role so if the job description has written that this skill is specifically required obviously you have to learn that skill that is different but i am talking about the broader range of people here so yeah all the best for your vlsl journey and i will see you in the next video